as I was preparing for this morning's message, um, I took my daily exercise, my 2.6 miles uh, of a walk around Bushy Park, and I took the chance to stop and to pray as I was going and to just reflect. And I came across a body of water. It was a man-made channel, and the water uh, was flowing from my right down to my left. There was a pond up at the top, and it flowed down the channel and off somewhere into the distance to my left. So I just quickly took a moment. I was nowhere near anybody else, and there was just a free bench, so I just sat for a second. And as I paused and I looked at the water, I began to notice that something was different. I'd thought that the water was flowing from my right down to my left, but the leaves on the surface of the water suddenly seemed to change direction. And I looked again, a bit perplexed, thinking, hang on, what did I miss? And as I looked at the water, the leaves indeed were flowing from my left to my right. You see, what I'd experienced was a kind of illusion of movement, where the combination of factors, the riverbank, um, the leaves on the surface, um, algae, green algae down off to my right, um, somehow those factors working together had created a bit of a, an illusion. When my brain interpreted the facts and said, oh, the water is going from right to left, and suddenly I realised it wasn't. It was going from left to right. The pond was the final destination. The source was somewhere off to one side. And all of a sudden I realised I'd seen things backwards. I sat there for a moment, amazed that my brain had seen these things the wrong way round, only to discover which way round it was. I believe that we find ourselves in such a moment today that we can bring our expectations before the Lord and ask, which direction is your spirit flowing, Lord? Has it altered course slightly? Are you doing something different? As the world shakes and strongholds continue to be rattled by this virus, it might be easy to look around us and, and come to a quick conclusion and think, oh, that must be the answer. Oh, that must be it. And yet, like a man-made stream that the man-made stream reveals, Interpreting the set of events at first glance might miss the flow that is actually taking place. If we're to press on to know him in this season, we must stop to look and ask for the ability to interpret the flow of the Holy Spirit. It will take times of silence. It will take responding to those spontaneous thoughts um, that are new to us, something we've not thought before. But they're new because we recognise there's distances and there's gaps in things around us. And our brain is able to uncover and the Holy Spirit can speak to our minds and reveal things to us. And it takes a boldness to pray, Lord, show me your ways and the humility to do something differently. I don't know about you, but as the things I once knew well have shifted slightly, I find myself cultivating ground for what could be new ideas in my spiritual practices. At the very least, they're thought patterns that once seemed so complete, but now they are altering slightly. I found some things being uncovered that I hadn't noticed before, and yet others glowing more brightly as they produce fruit in my life. Has the Holy Spirit's flow altered direction? Is he inviting you and me to pray deeper and more authentic prayers? Do I need to lay some things down? This is a complex season, and at times we struggle to pray. At this moment in time, perhaps our words have dried up. Perhaps you feel like something is stalling somehow. As you face another week of lockdown and isolation, the sense of sighing is the first experience we have. How are our prayers functioning when our hearts are feeling burdened or heavy in that way? Romans, 8, 20, Romans chapter 8 verses 26 to 28 say this. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, 
because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purposes. Don't worry. If your heart is struggling to pray, if the words are failing you, don't worry about that. As Paul talks about in Romans chapter 8, bring your silent prayers to God. Allow the groans of your heart to well up from within you. How good is it to know that the Holy Spirit is here to help us in our moments of weakness? When we run out of words, when we face the challenge to reflect on what the Holy Spirit may be up to, it's the Holy Spirit who can help us to make it all make sense. And he intercedes to the Father. He is able to take whatever we have prayed in unknown words and bring that before God. If you're running out of words, sit before God. Sit and allow your spirit to offer wordless prayers. Be still, but keep pressing into God. Challenging words too, these are. They presume that we are, are, we are knowers of the Holy Spirit. So let us, let us be confident that we know him. And God's plan words. These are words that reveal to us that all of this, well, God didn't, as John shared the other week, God didn't create the coronavirus. God isn't trying to beat people up with it. But as Paul declares, God has a plan and good will come through this. All those who believe in him, whether the circumstance is overwhelmingly painful, whether you have lost a friend or a loved one, whether you know of someone who's been deeply impacted by coronavirus, financially or otherwise, God has a plan for all who believe in him. He has a desire for everybody else too. But as we believe in him, these are God's plan words. I have no words to pray. Lord, what do I do? What do I say? Pray the prayerless, the wordless prayer. And allow the Holy Spirit to take that prayer for you and present it before God. Some of our internal tensions that we grapple with, they uh, arise as we're trying to make some sense of something new. Something we've not seen before. And yet with Romans 8 in view, we press on to know God in ways that we hadn't anticipated. Ways that may be new to us. Ways that may bring life and hope and joy for the future. Come, let us go with the Spirit. Let us look closely at the movements around us and do what is often overlooked sometimes, reflect deeply. The illusion of movement principle is distracting. That body of water completely threw me. But the flow of the Holy Spirit is authentic and life-giving. Let's, let's seek him together.